Well, it's Friday the 17th of April. Now, Dr. David's son in Canada sent me a, a really good idea, and like all the best ideas, it's really quite simple. So I just want to bring that to you first today. And uh, this is it here. So what it is, it's a sheet. And what we have is we have the clinical features down here. So we can see the clinical features here. Let's just blow that up a bit so we can see it. So we have the clinical features down there. So fever, of course, as you would expect, cough, sputum. So they're the features down there. Let's just go through these clinical features that we can have in COVID-19. So the fever is the temperature and we want to record the site of it. So are you taking the temperature in the ear, on the forehead, on the temple, under the armpit? because that's going to change the temperature a little bit. It tends to be warmer in your ear and colder in your forehead, for example. So the site's relevant. And then you can record the fever. So you could write the fever in there in degrees centigrade or degrees Fahrenheit on day one of the disease. Day two. So day one is when you first become symptomatic. So that would be day one there. So you could write your temperature in there. Day two there, day three there, day four, all the way on. And he's, he's allowed 14 days here on this form. Then cough. So you could, when the cough developed. Sputum is what you cough up. So uh, sometimes called phlegm. And there you want to notice the colour. So the colour might tell you if you're getting a bacterial infection, for example. So if the sputum was a rusty colour, you might be developing a, a pneumonia, secondary bacterial infection. Then sore throat, monitoring that. Then runny nose, nasal congestion. We know that's not a particularly common early feature, but um, worth recording anyway. Then shortness of breath. Now he's saying ring 811 there. So that would be the emergency line in whatever country you're in. Then the muscle or joint pain. Then if there's any chest pain. Then if there's any headache. Any fatigue. Diarrhea or vomiting. Pink or red eyes and this anosmia, this loss of smell, which is a curious feature. And then there's a space in the bottom to put any other clinical features that you might have. And then the good thing about this is that you can follow that over the course of the, of the illness. And this means you can report accurately to your healthcare provider and give them a very accurate picture of the evolution of your, of your uh, personal um, illness that you've you've been suffering through so if we just look at this on the uh, piece of paper yeah so we can write the name of the patient up here and their date of birth their medications what medications they're on any supplements they're taking a bit about their history or how they've treated themselves with the illness and a bit about their social history. So, and then you can put the vaccines there and allergies there. So you can put any information you want on really. But the key thing is you can record the progress of the illness. So on day one, so this, this is for me say, so on day one, maybe I had a, I had a fever. So maybe it was 37.9 on day one. Then it could have gone up on day three to, uh, 38.4 or whatever it is and then you can just monitor that as you go along cough here you can you can you could say you were coughing a lot or a little bit so or you could just tick it so you developed a cough then the coffee the cough then you cough that day maybe I didn't cough much that day or cough again that day then the days when you had a sputum so you could have maybe sputum was started to develop later on when you were coughing up sputum Sore throat might have developed later on as well, depending. This is not, you can't take this as, as a, an absolute, it's just an example. Runny nose, nasal congestion, maybe that didn't occur or maybe you just got a runny nose later on. Um, now, shortness of breath, of course, this is one of the more severe symptoms. So if you got that, you would have to contact a healthcare provider. Muscle and joint pain, well, that often occurs quite early as well. So, so that could be there early on in the condition. Uh, chest pain, you might want to report that to a healthcare provider as well. But again, it's a feature that people do report. Headache, fatigue, this feeling of undue fatigue. A lot of people get that near the start of the illness as well. So you could record when you had that. Diarrhea and vomiting. 
Well, we've seen that some people can present with diarrhea and vomiting, but other people can have a couple of days of diarrhea and vomiting and a bit of nausea. Then they can have a gap and then they can have another day. So again, interesting to record that. Pink eyes, loss of smell. Quite a lot of people report loss of smell. Interesting, especially near the start. And then any other features that you were, you were suffering from as well. So I thought that was just a remarkably simple but remarkably useful idea. So even if you didn't get one from your healthcare provider, you could just draw yourself out a grid with the features. And when you had them, just remembering that day one is the first day that you develop symptoms. So you can keep a map of the of the condition that you uh, you've suffered from. Now, have you seen on this? Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Sun here has provided some red flags. So I think we can maybe look at those in a little more detail. Perhaps not. Let's go there. Yep. So th these are his red flags. Now, uh, just to make it clear, I've actually uh, printed these out for you. Now, re red flags would be things that we would worry about um, particularly and contact healthcare providers about. So we would not suffer in silence with these. We would report them in. So th th this is the record to, to Dr. David's... Uh, site and his YouTube video on this. So red flags, what would we be worried about? So severe shortness of breath would be one and breathing difficulties. They're the things that we're perhaps most worried about in COVID-19 infection. And then Dr. David's also suggesting pain or pressure in the chest would be a red flag and merit a phone call to your healthcare provider. Um, if someone became cold, clammy or pale with mottled skin, now, this would represent a reduction in the circulation and potential shock. I think that's why he's included it as one of his red flags. New confusion. This is what we call altered mental status. So if someone became confused when they were ill and they weren't normally confused, that would be a red flag symptom and merit a healthcare professional discussion. Becoming difficult to rouse. Very sleepy, difficult to wake up. Blue lips or face. We call that cyanosis. It means the oxygen is very low. And little or no urine output would be another red flag, meaning that the kidneys might not be working. And I do like the way he's included neck stiffness and a non-blanching rash here. So neck stiffness is actually a classic of meningitis, as is this non-blanching rash, which is meningococcal sepsis. So what he's saying here is that... Um, don't forget, there are other illnesses that can exist as well as COVID-19. So he includes those as red flags for meningitis, which I, I thought was, was useful as well. But if you get ill or a member of your family gets ill, then if you haven't got one of these sheets, or you could download one from uh, the website. Um, D D D Dr. Sun said these are freely, these are free to use. He's developing this, so it's not this is not me saying what to do. It's not him saying what to do. It's just a good idea for monitoring the progress of your particular condition. Because it's very useful when you do ring your healthcare provider to be able to give a really good history. So much information comes from history. And here you'd have it all in front of you in one sheet. So I thought that was a, a, really, uh, a really good idea. So just a short video there. Now, just before we go, I think I'll just show you... Um, couple of nice pictures. This is Annette in Canada. Uh, at least it will be. Yep. And that's her cat helping to make masks. And there she's made some nice masks. So that's, that's brilliant. Now, the great thing about masks is they stop infected people or reduce the likelihood of infecting people, infecting other people. They're protecting those around us. And here we see some of uh, Annette's handiwork. So excellent. So these masks could stop those around Annette becoming infected should she become infected.